Good afternoon. I hope you are having a very nice Wednesday. The time now is 1230. I'm Julie Broughton. This is Take Six. We're so happy you stopped by to spend a little time with us today. We have a lot of cool things to talk about. If you've been watching our newscast, you probably know a really awesome story we're all super excited about. The Lake Mary All-Stars are in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, playing in the Little League World Series. Their first game is tonight, and News 6's Justin Warmoth is going along with them for that trip and bringing us all sorts of awesome coverage. We will check in with him in just a few minutes, but some Something else we are very excited to tell you about. We do something here called WKMG Hits the Road. Perhaps you've seen us. That's when we dial in on a community and we go into that community and we find out what stories you want to share with the rest of Central Florida. And so we've revealed our next location. September 18th, we are heading to Melbourne. We're taking our entire newscast on the road to Melbourne. So that means it's time for us to check in with you. News 6 investigator Eric Sandoval joins us now. And Eric, you have had the assignment. You've gone to Melbourne. You have talked to the people and they've told you what they want us to cover. Well, that's exactly right. <laughs> and I don't want to put you on the spot, Julie, but when was the last time you visited downtown Melbourne? I'm not sure. It's been a while. I will be going, of course, because we'll be doing our stories. But I right. mean, that's the thing. A lot of times even we aren't out in these communities a lot until they say, hey, we'd like you to cover it. So it's been right. a while. And, huh? and, and, and uh, no, no disrespect to Melbourne and downtown right. Melbourne, especially, you know, when I go to Brevard County and I do spend a lot of time in Brevard County, you know, I'm usually with my husband or with my family and we go to the beach or, right. you know, we, we hit the water. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we went to downtown Melbourne, I want to say two weeks ago with, like you said, with the task of talking to people and finding out what kinds of stories they wanted News 6 to cover. You know, what are we missing? And that, that that's the big question that we're trying to get answered with our Hits the Road series. You know, we, we've been to Sanford, we've been to Kissimmee, we've been to Montverde, we've been to a, a whole bunch of communities here in Central Florida. And you know what, as a news organization, I think we've, we've learned a lot about mm -hmm. what our viewers want to see on the news versus, you know, some of the bad news that sometimes we, we, we uh, are reporting. So, uh, you know, two weeks ago, uh, our producer Erica Bergulio and photographer James Cavanaugh, we went to downtown Melbourne and we met a whole bunch of business people and a whole bunch of residents who were walking the streets and they told us what they want to hear. And, you know, the answer resoundedly was they want more good news. They want us to report the good things that are happening in their, that area. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be digging and we're going to be asking you more questions about you know, what, what you want us to cover and what good news you want us to cover as well, Julie. You know, and we hear that time and time again. We'll meet people when we're out and people will say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't really watch the news because it's all it's all bad news. And then we always it's say, hey, yeah. but, you know, we cover, we have all sorts of franchises that cover great news. So I think one thing that I've really enjoyed uh, with our past hits the road is that we meet so many nice people and every person you meet has a couple of suggestions that turn out to be great stories. And not only do we, do we focus on these communities for that week, but then it gives us the opportunity to go back and check in with them or issues that they say, hey, this this situation is not so good. Check it out. So that gives us that opportunity, too. Absolutely. And, you know, what, one of the business people we spoke with owns a salon. And she said exactly what you just said. You know, she's tired of hearing about the shooting. She's tired of hearing about uh, the, the bad news coming out of, you know, all four corners of Central Florida, yes. quite frankly. And she said she wanted, you know, more emphasis on some issues facing downtown. In the video you're looking at right now, if you look closely, you're going to see a lot of uh, for lease signs or mm -hmm. store closing signs. And she said that that's a real big issue in downtown Melbourne right now. She said, you know, a couple of years ago, there was a rash of shootings in downtown Melbourne. She said, um, you know, because of that and because of the, the lingering effects of, of the pandemic, a lot of businesses there are just struggling to get tourists to come in and, and see what they're all about. And she's fearful about the future of downtown Melbourne and, you know, what can be done to bring these businesses back, to bring businesses that people actually want to visit. Um, you know, <laughs> Our producer was so blown away by by this woman's salon. She actually bought a gift card. She said, I oh, had wonderful. no idea you were here. And, and she she got a gift card to come back and and actually, you know, enjoy some of the services that are there. So, um, you know, a if you're going to be in the downtown Melbourne area, go get some lunch, walk around this wonderful downtown area. See there the closing sign on the left hand side. Yeah. Um, 
you know, pay these businesses some, or give these businesses some, some business, if you will, mm -hmm. um, and, and really see what this place is all about. And then go outside downtown Melbourne because Melbourne's a big city. We're learning a lot more about the high tech business, uh, high tech industries there, the, the, the high tech incubators that are there. We had heard tell of that, but we had no idea how big the mm -hmm. tech industry is there. This is the next Silicon Valley that's right next to yeah. the Space Coast. It's really cool. I feel like, like you said, as a news organization as a whole, when we go into these communities and every single one of us will be out in the community doing whatever our franchises are. So I'm looking for mm -hmm. school stories and we're looking for a Getting Results Award winner. If you know anyone right. doing great things, email me, email us. But we right. learn so much. And, you know, I always think, my gosh, I've lived here 23 years and some of these communities I haven't spent a lot of time in because we all kind of get stuck in our bubble, right? You know, you go to home, you go yeah. work, you walk your dog the same place every day. So it really gets us out of our comfort zone and we develop so many great contacts. And people are so nice when we do the live show and people come out and they see us and they give us more story ideas. And it's just, it's so nice to actually hear from the people who watch us and the people we serve. And the one thing uh, you hit the nail on the you hit the you hit it on the nose. Julie. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, we walked in and, you know, they, they see the news crews and they go, oh, my gosh, what happened? Mm -hmm. And we say, actually, we're here to tell some good stories and we yeah. want to know what we're getting, what we're missing. Mm -hmm. And the smile that came on their faces like, oh, my gosh, I've been wanting to tell you this for yes. so long. And they gave us a long list. And that brings us back to what you were saying, Julie. We it doesn't end here. We want to know what you think we need to be doing stories on in the Melbourne area. If you live there, if you visit there, if you have family there, what are we missing? So go to clickorlando.com slash hits the road. And there's a form there for you could for you to fill out that's going to email our producer Erica and she's going to be going through those and assigning stories. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this because yes. you know I, I love Sanford, I love mm -hmm. Kissimmee, I loved Montverde, but um, there's something about downtown Melbourne, and it makes you want to come back and see what you missed. Yeah, I so can't I'll wait. just leave it at that. I can't wait because I'm, I've am probably missed a lot because I haven't been there in a while. So I'm really excited right. to go. And again, please email us. Like I said, we are always looking for stories. And Eric, you mentioned that Erica bought a gift card at that salon. Now, a lot of people watching don't know Erica, but she's really a fashion icon. So I feel like that is a very high <laughs> compliment is. that Erica <laughs> bought a gift card there and wants to go back because she she knows her stuff when we're talking about yeah, she fashion. She does. <laughs> she sure we does. All, we all look up to her as our as our fashion idol. <laughs> Yep. All right, Eric. We'll thank do before you. and afters, okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Eric. Can't <laughs> wait to see more of your story later today on News 6. You got it. Thanks, Julie. And as we mentioned, we're also very excited about the Lake Mary All-Stars. Justin Warmoth is on the road with them in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. We will have much more about their journey to the Little League World Series coming up after the break.
Welcome back to Take Six here at 1240. Today is a big day for the Lake Mary All-Stars. That is when they play their first game in the Little League World Series. Justin Warmoth is along with them, bringing us so much fun, fabulous coverage. He joins us now live from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Justin, we have all been enjoying your coverage so much. I know you were with the guys at the parade last night, and today baseball starts today, which I know you're excited about. Oh. Finally, Julie, this is what we've all been waiting for. And it's what these uh, families and what these players have been waiting for as well. But there is so much that goes into the Little League World Series. And I think they've been soaking up every single step of this process. This opportunity is once in a lifetime. I talked to some of the parents. They know how difficult this is for these boys. And what a moment this is for not only them, but for all of Lake Mary. Last night, as you're watching on this video here, was the Grand Slam Parade through downtown Williamsport. The boys signing autographs, waving to the crowd on that float there. It's a semi-truck. So one, it was a one-mile trek. There's the parents. It was so cool to see the kids get literally rock star treatment. I've, I've not, I have not seen this before. 12-year-olds signing autographs. You think it's the Beatles, but it's 12-year-olds who just love playing baseball, Julie. It was really a really cool thing. They gave 40,000 people in downtown Williamsport last night, and then they had opening ceremonies today, and then finally we get some action. I'm watching the Caribbean and Mexico take some infield outfield practice before they play tonight, or today, in like the next 20 minutes they're playing. So this is like the first game of the Little League World Series. I wanted to get a little taste of it before we uh, went back tonight, because it's Lake Mary doesn't play until 7 o'clock, so the kids have some downtime. There's so much going on here. I just wanted to get a peek at some, some actual baseball. Yes. Yes, and you were showing me before we went on how beautiful the stadium is. I don't know if you can do a little pan yeah, for us. Show us. All right, so this is a volunteer stadium. This is the this is one of the stadiums. They have Lomity Stadium, which is really a cool place. And that's where the boys will play tonight. That's that's like a tier up from Volunteer Stadium. I'm not gonna say Volunteer Stadium is nice. It's absolutely <laughs> beautiful. But the ones that, the one that's pretty iconic is Lomity Stadium. It's like right behind me. Um, I talked to some parents today. Everyone seems, you know, you think that they'd be nervous because I'm certainly nervous and I don't have, you know, a kid playing on this team. But the parents are relaxed. They're super excited just to see their kids take the field, and I think they're really confident because of how well they've been playing throughout this entire summer. They outscored their opponents 35 to 8 in the Southeast Regional. How's that for a stat? Pulling that out of my back pocket for you, Julie. And I think they're just confident. They're poised. They're ready to go. They're ready to go. The video of them in the parade signing autographs, they all looked so confident, so calm. And you know, it's it's amazing. How what were they how what were they saying after the parade last night about what that experience was like? <laughs> I you know, they were I'm going to say they weren't shocked by it. They weren't shocked that they were going to be rock stars because here's the thing. The Little League World Series, especially in like today's world with social media, they know exactly what they're getting into because so many of their peers have gone through, not peers in Central Florida per se, but they just know that every year 20 teams, 20 of the best teams all across the world come here. So they get a little taste of it online, but to be in person, they were they were blown away. Certainly, the parents were blown away by by last night um, yeah. being there and, and seeing literally the town shut down for these kids. They add their population. I was talking to the mayor of Williamsport. <laughs> they double their population this time of year. Wow, for good it's a reason boom town. because this it is a it's a boom town for a two week stretch in August. There's no doubt. So they play tonight at 7 o'clock. Well, how does this all break down, assuming they keep winning, which we all know they will? Then we'll, when will they play again? How does it work? All right, so if they win tonight at 7 o'clock, they play Friday night also at 7 o'clock. I think ESPN and uh, in the Little League World Series, I think they know that this team from Lake Mary means business and they are quite good and fun to watch. Mm -hmm. So they're giving them that 7 o'clock prime time spot Ooh. for good reason. Um, and so, yeah, so from there, if they keep winning, they play like every other day. And I think they need five wins to win the U.S. championship, six wins to win the world championship. If they lose, that becomes a little harder. You have to win more games. You want to stay in the winner's bracket when it comes to tournaments like this. I am uh, I just spotted my photographer down there, uh, Daniel Macaluso. 
he's dropping the gear off, but I told him I would be at Volunteer Stadium doing take six with, with the world famous Billy Bryan. So I just wanted to make sure he spotted me. <laughs> yes. Up. All right. Yep. So now, now they're getting set. Fifteen okay. minutes. Everything is super regiment here. Uh, they follow strict orders. I'm, I'm just glad they haven't kicked me out of the press booth just yet. But um, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. We, it has been my favorite part of our newscast. The other day, I think the producer was like, oh, I'm sorry, we had to cut your time. Um, they talked to <laughs> Justin a little long. I'm like, you should take all my time when nothing's going on because that's what we all want to see. It's, we're all so excited. We all can't wait. Hopefully, we'll just see you in two weeks. You've got to stay with them the whole time and just fly back with them when they're world champions. That's like the number one question I've had from the parents. And getting to know these parents, they are so cool. I've, I've really enjoyed it, uh, getting to know them. But they, they keep asking are you going to be here for the whole thing? We're scheduled. We're scheduled to come home Sunday. But here's the thing. If they keep winning and they have a chance to win the Little League World Series, we'll be back. We'll be back. It'll be a brief yes. stop back home. Then we're going to head on back. Come home, do some laundry, and head right back. That's that's <laughs> what we need, honestly. Um, although the hotel did say that they have a laundromat there. But I don't know if I have time to necessarily do the laundry. Right. That's... We, ate dinner. We, ate, we ate dinner last night, Julie. At what time was that, Dave? Midnight, eleven o'clock. By the time we got everything sent in, it was that. That's when dinner was. We skipped lunch, had dinner. So that's kind of how this has been. We've been busy following these boys. So that's that's the way. You know, it, content comes first, food comes second. That's how we've been operating. But we, it's easy to sit here and look at these trips and be like, this is so much fun. And, of course, it's fun, but there is so you work so much harder when you're on the road covering something. It is nonstop. So I know you have many more things to do. So I could talk to you all day, but I won't because I know you have we're gonna, many we're more gonna things. Be live, we're going to be live at 4 o'clock. Uh, well, I think. I, haven't, I, haven't, I don't know. I assume we're, we're going to be live leading up to the game yeah. at 7 o'clock. I have some good content that we want to show you. Got some great video of opening ceremonies. Got some interviews with the parents. So look for that this afternoon. All right, Justin. We can't wait to see. We'll talk to you during the four then. All right, Julie. See you. All right. I can't wait to see what he has going on at four. And I don't even watch baseball, but I'm so excited and can't wait to watch these boys play. All right, let's get to your forecast for you now. Ernesto, as of 11 o'clock, is now a hurricane. It is about 180 miles north of San Juan, Puerto Rico, moving to the north-northwest at 16 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds are at 75 miles per hour. We are expecting it to continue to strengthen as it makes that journey toward Bermuda. Here's a look at the radar for you now. Already seeing some showers developing in Sumter County and Lake County. If you're in the villages, you're getting some pockets of heavy rain. Not huge showers, but again, we're continuing to see showers developing. And I think rain today will be a little bit more widespread than we saw yesterday because we have that front to our north that is going to bring us drier air for the weekend, so it's going to feel much more comfortable. Here's how it looks for you on the clouds and rain, rain forecast as we move through the afternoon hours. I went through that one pretty fast, so I'm going to back up for you. We start the clock at 1 o'clock, head till about 3, 4 o'clock. Looks like that model maybe hasn't quite updated for us yet. But again, we're going to see showers moving from north to south throughout the day ahead of a front that moves in for our Thursday. So that keeps our rain chances at 50 percent. Heat is a big story for us again today if you are shaded in orange. So that is every county except for Sumter County and Western Marion County. So in Marion County to the west of I-75, you are not under a heat advisory. Everyone else is until 6 o'clock. Right now it is 91 in Orlando, 92 in Sanford, 91 in Melbourne, Ocala, you're at 90, and it is 92 in Daytona Beach. Factor in the relative humidity, this is why we have those heat advisories in place. It feels like 115 degrees right now in New Smyrna Beach. If you have to be outside, make sure you drink a lot of water. Take a lot of breaks. This heat is dangerous. 108 is how it feels in Daytona Beach. Here's what we're expecting for the next seven days. Again, that front comes through tomorrow. So ahead of that, a 50% chance of showers and storms. 96 for high tomorrow. But look at Friday. We are expecting much drier air to move in. Only seeing a high of 90. I know it sounds kind of crazy to say that. But when you've been talking about heat index readings at 115, like we just saw for some folks in Volusia County, 90 with low relative humidity is going to feel wonderful. This should be the nicest Friday and Saturday we've seen in quite a while, overnight lows will stay in the 70s. I so will have much more on this and Ernesto for you coming up on News 6 at 4. Lisa Bell, Ginger Gadsden, and I will see you then. If you have any questions or comments for us here at Take 6, head to clickorlando.com slash take 6. Let us know what's on your mind. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you at 4.